right, you guys, good morning. We are here currently at the VPC, the Vehicle Processing Center. We are shipping out my car, my Ford Edge today. It'll be shipped out on the way to Alaska. Wow, this is exciting, right? This is a really big step. Uh, the household goods, the whole storage unit, as you guys know, has been packed up and is on the way to Alaska. Now my car is being shipped out. We have a lot of appointments going on this week. It is one week. We are one week until we head out across country to the new Alaska homestead. So I thought I would take you guys along with us just on all of these last minute preps, these last minute appointments that we have. Tomorrow we have to take the puppies to the vet. As you guys know, we have to get health certificates for them to get on the ferry. And then we also have to have the health certificates to get through Canada when we're driving up to Alaska. So lots going on. I thought it'd be fun to take you guys along. Some of you are really curious how all this goes down, especially military. Um, you guys know the deal, shipping vehicles, and we've done this many times, uh, twice that we lived in Alaska. So this will be our third time shipping a vehicle up there. So with that being said, I think we're a few minutes early, but we are here at the Vehicle Processing Center in Virginia, getting ready to ship my car. Yeah. All right, just like that, my car is gone. Joe did a fantastic job of cleaning it, getting all the paperwork ready. Like they have all these requirements. You can only have a quarter tank of gas. Nothing can be in the, the car, not even like phone chargers. Uh, so he spent a couple days detailing the car, just got done with all the paperwork. So now we're gonna go grab a bite to eat because we actually haven't eaten yet today. And we're gonna splurge a little bit because we have some restaurants here that I don't think we have in Alaska. So we're gonna go over to the Cheesecake Factory today. Joe, you already locked it. Okay. Stop. Oh my God. So they say that the car should be in Anchorage, Alaska by the middle of November, which is actually kind of perfect because that is the estimated arrival time for the Polaris Ranger that we're gonna be shipping to. So it would be really nice if they both arrived and we could go, you know, if they arrived at the same time so we could pick them up on the same day because it's quite a drive from our cabin down to Anchorage and back. So I would hate to get to Alaska and have to make two back-to-back -back trips to Anchorage. So we'll see how that works out. But we're here at the Cheesecake Factory to get some lunch. I'm excited because Parker's never been here and he loves cheesecake. Joe, is it starting to feel real yet? What? Oh, uh, you know, that whole thing, that that thing that's not really that big of a deal, just moving to Alaska. I don't have feelings, remember? <laughs> so we have, as of today's recording, we have what, eight days, right? About eight days. Yeah until we hit the road for Alaska. And I think Joe's getting excited. Doesn't he look excited? <laughs> be excited when we get there. He'll be excited when we get there. That's what he says about everything. Even when I was pregnant with our kids, he's like, I'll be excited once it's born. It's kind of how all guys are though, right? That's what I've heard anyway. I always look so much bigger than you on camera. I think we should switch spots. I have nothing to do with the camera. <laughs> if you sit here and then I sit there, I'll appear smaller because you're further away. See? But right now, I look like a pumpkin. Joe, look at Look. I look like a pumpkin. Look. I'm a pumpkin. I do. I do. I look like a pumpkin. I look really big. Did you have something to say? Why do you feel British here? 
Out in British is Scottish. I've got Scottish in me. I found out I did ancestry DNA and I'm part Scottish. Parker and Lexi are too naturally, which is where they're getting their red hair from. Does that sound Scottish? No. That sounds like British. British, yeah. So I don't understand. <laughs> oh, you didn't ask me what I got. I got the chicken Riesling. Huh? Hold on. I mean, it's chicken like soaked in wine. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's chicken soaked in wine. You talking about Netflix? No, wait, Parker. No, Parker, you cannot watch Netflix while we wait for our food. Do you know why? Because we are one big happy family and we're going to spend quality time together right here, right now. I'm just kidding. You can't until our food comes and then you need to turn it off. Um, I Definitely did not need all that food. <laughs> right, Joe? But it was so good. We hardly ever do things like that. So that was delicious. We were kind of in the area because the vehicle processing center was over this way anyway. So we figured we would treat ourselves. And just for the record, I did not eat that whole piece of cheesecake. Liar. <laughs> I took half of it for later. We're grabbing an afternoon cup of coffee. We are gonna take our puppies to one of our favorite trails. I wanna show you guys, just really showcases the beauty of Virginia. But I wanted to ask you, Joe, what are you gonna do your first week of retirement at the cabin? What are you most excited about? Oh, oh sleeping in. Sleeping in? Can't really do much when we get there. Why? It's gonna be all snowy. We can do a lot. We're gonna go sledding. We have that big dirt hill that goes down, remember, right in front of the cabin, goes all the way out to the pond. And we have sleds already from the previous owners, so we're going to go sledding. Parker's never been sledding. And I cannot wait to see these dogs in the snow, especially Bradley, because he's such a he's such a puppy puppy in his mind. He's gonna have so much fun. But it's kind of crazy to think Joe, as of today, actually has seven working days left, you guys. Can you believe it? We've been in the military since we graduated high school, and I'm so glad 
now looking back at everything that we joined so early because we're getting to retire early. So very exciting. We have not heard anything still as of yet to the contrary. So we are just trucking forward with our plans as is. So we've seen a ton of headlines lately about families, I think usually in the military, traveling across country and getting robbed along the way. Like, this family on the headlines this morning, their entire U-Haul that had their car on a trailer was hijacked. They they just, they stole it. This whole family lost all their stuff. So I told Joe, I'm like, here we are driving with the enclosed trailer that has our big, huge sticker on it that I did that just announces who we are. So not only can you go and see what we look like, you can kind of get an idea that our whole life is in the trailer. <laughs> so Joe's like, I'm sleeping in the truck. You guys can sleep in the hotel. I'm gonna sleep in the truck. I'm like, oh my gosh, can you imagine? That would be horrible. Especially because everything in that trailer that we're pulling has everything that we need when we get to the cabin, like all of our necessities. So anyway, how you think, how you feel about that, Joe? Fine. Fine, then I'm gonna sleep in the truck. I mean, about the whole thing. Are you nervous about like someone breaking into? No, because I'm gonna sleep in the truck. You're not gonna sleep in the truck for reals. Are you gonna sleep in here with Gunner and Bradley? They'll let you know if anybody comes up to the truck. I'll well, keep one dog, you keep the other one. I think that's a good idea because you might be in the truck. What if there's like a psycho at the hotel? I mean, there could be like a psycho cleaning lady or something. And if you're not there to protect me, what am I gonna do? <laughs> huh? I used to do kung fu and kickboxing. I think I could take her. You know what I'm saying? Who said it's a her? Why did the cleaners off to be hers? Stop it. Did I offend you? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I've had several comments on some different videos, and it's always women that say I'm rude to Joe, I'm mean to Joe, I'm condescending, like all these things you, hey, you be quiet over there. And I'm like, what? I had one lady on our little backyard greenhouse video. I made a joke, okay, a joke. We were staining the wood on the greenhouse and I told Joe, why stain it? We're moving, this isn't our forever home. Like that's a lot of work to stain all those two by fours. And I knew Joe wasn't going for it. Joe, Joe's always like, if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it the right way. And that's what I said on the video in a joking manner. And she just lit me up about how condescending I was and she had had enough and this and that. And I'm like, goodness gracious people, lighten up. I cannot imagine what your life must be like if you are that wound up. We have been married for 23 years and let me tell you, if we didn't tease each other and joke around, I don't think we would have made it this long. <laughs> but I'm like, trust me, Joe can handle his own, can't you Joe? No. No? Are you scared? Joe, blink I twice for I'm yes. Scared of COVID. So this was one of the first trails that we ever brought Gunner and Bradley to. And I really like it because it's a long trail. It's a beautiful view out here. And what a perfect fall day to go for a walk. But they have a playground area with like rock walls and stuff that we use to train the dogs. They do all kinds of things and they have a really big dog park out here too. So it's just a great place to bring the puppies to let them get all their energy out.
Come, right there. Come, Get up there. Good boy. Come here. Good Come here. Come here. Come here. Hey. Oh, yeah. Get Oh, that's a good boy. Hi, Bradley. Oh, you're such a good dog. These dogs can jump at insane heights. Have you guys ever just YouTube like the Belgian Malinois breed? These dogs are amazing. Um, somebody sent me a video on Instagram the other day of one of them scaling a tree. And she asked me, do you think your dogs could do that? I have no doubt at some point they could, especially Bradley. He jumps super high. You guys have seen that some of the videos that we've shared with you, but they're just so fun. It's not like going on a regular walk with these two. Oh, you are too sexy for your leash. Too sexy for your leash, Gunner. Are they ready? <gasps> <laughs> you gotta keep it up, Brad. You gotta keep it up. Good boy. Good boy. Nope. Cheater. <laughs> Bradley. Hey, good boy. Bradley, sit. Good. That's how good, puppy. side of it. Does it like post on Facebook? How cool. That's cool. So that's three, huh? Yeah. Show you these ones. Oh, that's the battery. A lady gave me this one. What does that one say? Stay hydrated. And this one has lips that says hi. <laughs> I guess somebody paints rocks and hides them out here for people to find. So a lady that we walked by gave Parker one earlier and ever since he's been looking for them and he found two on his own so far on the trail.
Parker, you know what they say about kids that walk around a cemetery, don't you? What? You haven't heard? Oh. Joe, he hasn't heard. You really never heard? Like what happens to kids that walk around a cemetery? No. Nope. You did a full circle around it, bud. What happens? I don't know. We'll I don't think I'm allowed to tell you. We'll see tonight, buddy. No, I'm just kidding. You look really scared. Don't do that face, <laughs> <laughs> It is October, buddy. Come on. Ooh. Come on. Just kidding. He's not affected. He knows Jesus lives up in our house. Look, Joe's gonna get beat up by a praying mantis. Oh, oh, oh Joe, it's gonna his, fight you. He's got his mitts up, huh? He's gonna punch, watch. Oh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Joe, he is straight ready to beat you up. Look at him. Gonna get you. Gunner, gonna get you. he's gonna get you. <laughs> oh, he's scared, Joe. Daddy, let Gunner get hit. Oh! <laughs> Joe, move Gunner. I don't want him to smush it. <laughs> oh, they're bad, huh? They don't even care. You're a gangster. Gangster, eh? They Bradley. Oh, Bradley. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, uh-uh. No. Oh, I don't do bugs. I don't do bugs. <laughs> Hey you guys, good morning. Uh, it is a gloomy day today. I woke up to sheets of rain coming down, but I actually don't mind it. We're in the fall season and sometimes rainy days are awesome, right? So I'm standing outside, well actually I'm not standing, I'm sitting, because as you guys know, we don't have a lot of natural light in the apartment and on gloomy days like this, it's super dark. So today we have to take the dogs over to the vet. We have to get health certificates for them. They're already up to date on all of their immunizations, rabies and everything, but in order to travel on the Alaska ferry system, them, and also to get through that little chunk of Canada that we have to go through, they require a health certificate from a vet. So we're taking both dogs over there this morning to get those. On the way there, I am going to get a haircut. That's why I just threw my hair up this morning. Um, you know, the cabin is pushed really far out. So to just run in and get a haircut once we're in Alaska is not going to be happening. It's going to be something that you know, is, is done in conjunction with groceries, grocery hauls or supply hauls. So before we go, I want to go get a really good trim. I think the last major thing that we have to do is ship the Polaris Ranger. I am getting a little bit concerned because we booked through a broker that books a, a transporter from Virginia to Washington. So a driver takes the Polaris from Virginia to Washington and then they've booked through a separate Alaska company to take it across a barge from Washington to Alaska. Well, the Alaska company has been booked, but the transporter from Virginia to Washington State has yet to be booked, and I'm a little concerned because the broker said that it would be fine and here we are like seven days before we hit the road and we still have the Polaris Ranger in our possession with no transporter booked as of the recording of this video I just emailed him yesterday and I was like hey just checking in with you cuz I haven't heard cuz he told me once we get the transporter I will email you their contact information and then you guys can nail down a date and a place and everything for him to come pick up the Polaris well we leave in seven days and that is yet to happen so that's gonna be a major problem if we go to hit the road and nobody's been booked and picked up this Polaris I'm not really sure what we're gonna do obviously there's gonna be a breaking point for me if we get to like two to three days out and we still don't have somebody um, I don't know I'm gonna have to probably step in and book something myself which is kind of annoying because we paid this broker a fee to just handle all this for us we'll see what happens you guys that's just how life is sometimes things a lot of times just can't ever just be easy right but no sense in complaining no sense in crying over spilt perfume right as Pam tell us I just got a truck on figure it out and work it out so that's the last big thing we have um, all the appointments are done my car is now shipped we check out of the apartment in one week. They do the final walkthrough so we can get our security deposit back and then we'll be hitting the road. And my plan is to do 
multiple videos for you guys and I hope you're super excited. Uh, I will have a lot of time in the truck while we're driving to edit content and get things prepared for you guys. The only thing that's going to be kind of sketchy is internet. So I'm not sure um, if there's going to be a little bit of a delay between our last video here in Virginia and when I upload my next video for you guys. Obviously, you know me, I'll do my very best. All right guys, so with that being said, we're going to jump into this day and get these puppies over to the vet and knock out these health certificates. <laughs> well, I didn't get to capture Bradley getting up in the truck because Bradley's being a bad, bad boy today, huh, Joe? <laughs> Joe told him get up and he went around and jumped in my side of the truck jumped across the console into Joe's seat it's raining everything is wet and nasty so yeah we didn't capture that on video I'm so sad to be leaving my hairstylist, Jamie. She's awesome. I think I've been with her for at least a couple to a few years now. And you guys, you ladies know how important it is to find a good hairstylist. Not just someone that can do your hair the way that you like them to do your hair, but that you can relate to, you can have good conversation with because you're sitting in their chair talking to them for a good minute every time you see them. Why does it have to be ladies? Oh. So a man can't have a hairdresser? Do you feel the same way? <laughs> no. Do you like your hairstylist, Joe? No. You don't like her? Mm -hmm. Why? Because she makes care. you wear a mask? Well, I don't care who I use. Oh. I'm just Sorry. saying there's some people, dudes that have hair. Yes, Joe? Tell, tell me more, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> that have hair like yours that have like a man bun and stuff? Mm -hmm. Babe, what? you should do the man bun. No. I am. When you get to Alaska, grow out your beard and then do the man bun. He's joking, he's not gonna do the man bun. But anyway, I'm gonna have a task when I get to Alaska finding another hairstylist that is anywhere near as good as Jamie. So all my peeps up there in Alaska, let me know who you use. <laughs> Because I'm going to need somebody. Even though I'm just going to be getting it trimmed and stuff, I stopped dyeing my hair like, I don't know, a year ago. My whole adult life, I've dyed my hair. Not really dyed it, but highlighted it. Um, even when I was active duty military, I always highlighted my hair. Got blonde streaks put in it. And my hair is actually naturally really dark, apparently. So I'm not going to be dyeing it anymore. I just don't really feel the need to do all that stuff anymore. But I will still need to get it cut every once in a while. So anyway, shout out to Jamie here in Virginia. All right, so we are here at the vet. They open up from lunch in just a couple of minutes. So Joe's gonna let the puppies go potty before we take them in. Um, I did wanna mention, I had a couple people ask me if we still have our cats or what happened to our cats because you guys haven't seen them in any of the recent videos. So we have decided as a family for several different reasons to rehome the kitty cats here in Virginia before we head up to Alaska. and. I've decided I'm just not even going to go into why we made that decision 
because I had a couple people ask me in the comment section, where's your cats? What'd you do with your cats? And when I explained that to them, that we've rehomed them, this woman proceeded to rip my head off and tell me I am irresponsible, I'm a terrible mom to teach my kids that, I'm a terrible YouTube influencer to teach my followers that it's okay to just get animals and get rid of them, even though she has no idea why we made that decision, right? And I will tell you, we are not a family that makes it a habit of getting any animals and getting rid of them as if they're nothing. Look at our dogs. We had our first Dalmatian until the day he died from a tumor. We had our second Dalmatian until the day he died from his issues. Ollie, we sent to Lexi because that was really her dog anyway. We keep our animals their whole lives. So it's just really funny. People like to judge when they don't really know what they're talking about. But I'm really just not gonna go into why we decided to rehome them, but we did. And that's why you guys don't see them on the videos anymore, just in case you were wondering. Do you know I'm looking and I can't help but smile? Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on, I put my feet up, and we just sing along, and I can't help but feeling just loving. you guys we got the pet health certificates so these are good for 30 days which is perfect timing um because we need them for the ferry they have to be dated within 30 days of travel so this is great one more thing marked off that to-do list anyway you guys we are back home at the apartment and i still have to do school with parker today we're getting a late start because we had the vet appointment and stuff this morning but i am so grateful to you guys joining us on this journey and i just want to thank you for being here i love your messages and comments i get so excited to read them i know some of you are really excited about the trip coming up as are we so we will be taking you guys along with us and i did want to let you know as promised we are going to be doing a live stream next week before we hit the road We are gonna hang out and do one last homestead hangout before we head up to Alaska. I'm hoping that our internet at the cabin will be good enough for live streams. I don't know because live streams take a lot of internet, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to do live streams after this. We're gonna continue doing videos for the channel, but I don't know if we're gonna be able to do a live stream. So just in case, we wanna make sure to hang out with you guys one last time live. So be prepared with your comments and questions to come hang out with us next week before we head out for Alaska. As usual, I'll be sure to post a link for that upcoming video so you guys can uh, set reminders for the live stream. And I hope to see you there. And for those that can't make it, Hope we catch you on the replay. You know, we love hanging out with you guys on live streams. It's just really neat to interact with you live, you know, talking back and forth versus just replying to comments in the comment section on our videos. So bring your favorite drink, whether that is a cup of coffee or a good glass of wine, whatever floats your boat. And we will hang out with you guys soon. I'm looking forward to it. All right, you guys, I think that's gonna be it for today's vlog. Thanks for hanging out with us the last couple days. We will see you very soon on the next video.